Well, hey, AP, hope you're doing well when you watch this video. Hope your break was amazing and fantastic and restful. Hopefully you feel rested and rejuvenated and you had a great time with family and friends. I tell you what, every single year the Christmas break goes a little bit faster. It went pretty quick this time. But again, I hope your break was amazing and you are all ready to get back at it. AP Biology, come on now, let's, what's up? Let's go. But this is the online presentation of mitosis and the cell cycle. This is um, a lot of review from ninth grade. That's why you know, I'm assigning it online. We'll, we'll dive into a little bit uh, deeper into a few concepts, but mostly we'll save the hard stuff for in class. And so let's go ahead and begin. So here's a picture of mitosis. You can see like the cell going through it. And this is part of the cell cycle. So why is this important from a big picture standpoint? Big picture standpoint, it's so important to be able to pass genetic information from one generation to the next. And it's called the continuity of life. We've got to be able to pass on this genetic information. We use this to reproduce as far as asexual organisms go, as far as biology, life science. But then also mitosis ensures growth, repair, replacing of tissues. Even um, we will discuss cancer in this unit in class as well. So this is a slide that you might want to pause and kind of review before we dive into it. You need to be able to describe the structure of a nucleus and chromosomes, describe the structure and function of microtubules and microfilaments be able to kind of talk to me about signal transduction and how phosphorylation affects proteins. And so let's go ahead and begin with the overview. Overview of the key roles of cell division. So the ability of organisms to produce more of their own kind in Genesis, right? Um, God created them after their kind. And so probably kinds and species are not the same now. And we'll talk more about that down the road with, with creation and evolution topic. But the continuity of life is based on the reproduction of cells or cell division. Here's a hydra. And it's kind of budding off right here. And this is like a little baby hydra. And so uh, not like, you know, of Avenger fame. And so, and so here's that picture again. So you can see that the overview of key roles of cell division in use of the organism cell reproduces the entire organism. So that's reproduction, asexual reproduction. For multicellular eukaryotes, we renew, repair, replace. And this is all part of the cell cycle, which we'll dive into a little bit more in a little bit. So you can see here, here's asexual reproduction to an amoeba, a single cell eukaryote divided into two. Here's growth and development, a uh, sand dollar embryo shortly after the fertilized egg divided. I used to actually go hunting for sand dollars off Amory Island um, back in the day. That's a long time ago. And then tissue renewal. These dividing bone marrow cells will give rise to new blood cells. Your blood literally comes from your skeletal system. And so here are, you know, bone cells really early on that will give rise eventually through a lot of differentiation to mature red blood cells. And so most cell division results in the genetic distribution of identical material DNA to daughter cells. DNA is passed from one generation to the next. Your DNA, with a few changes due to meiosis and crossing over, which we'll talk about later on, came from mom and dad. 23 chromosomes from mom, 23 from dad. And we will talk down the road about what happens when those numbers are different. And so all the DNA in a cell constitutes the cell's genome. That's some definitions you need to know about. Remember, fill in what's read for sure on your note packet that is due. And so a genome can consist of single, like in prokaryote single DNA molecule, or multiple ones as common in eukaryotic cells. DNA molecules are packaged into chromosomes, which look like this. They're kind of like highly condensed, packaged together, a um, lot of DNA coiled up. And so let's get some definitions down here. So chromatin is a complex of DNA and protein. And so somatic cells, there's two different types of cells. Somatic cells are non-reproductive cells. So we have uh, for humans have 46 chromosomes, two sets of 23, but only 22 of those are somatic cells. The 23rd pair are our sex chromosomes, X and Y. Okay, and so yes, two sets of 23. And so for gametes, these have half the number of chromosomes. So these are our reproductive cells, sperm and eggs. And so they only have half because of course, if human beings are 46 chromosomes, 23 put from mom and 23 from dad equals 40. Six. So each duplicated chromosome has two sister chromatids. So when a cell is not dividing, chromosomes are very, you know, thin and they're not coiled together and they're just chromatin fiber. But when the cell is dividing, the chromosomes condense and they form two sister chromatids. And the centromere is where the two chromatids are most closely um, attached. So you can see here, histones are proteins that is associated with DNA. So DNA is like you know, if it's not replicating, if the cell's not duplicating, it looks like spaghetti is like inside the nucleus. But if it starts to condense, it coils itself around these histones. 
and these form nucleosomes and so DNA is charged negatively charged and so you can see that this kind of folds around on itself and eventually you get a really condensed chromosome which where the centromere is right there holding the chromatids together and so chromatin condenses into distinctly visible chromosomes okay and that's just a picture here so again chromosome number does not equal complexity that's something that you know sometimes is a little bit confusing but for example um, a potato has 48 chromosomes two more than us uh, a goldfish has 94 chromosomes a lot more than us do some quick quick math here uh, what 48 there you go and so um, you can see here that chromosome number does not equal complexity we might not have you know you know those 94 chromosomes could be really small just we have 46 chromosomes we got 3 billion base pairs so we got a lot of information there okay more definitions here here's a karyotype you can see that 2x is female xy male and so the diploid number 2n includes the two sets of chromosomes and so mitosis okay diploid cells are produced by mitosis sperm and eggs have only one type and they're called termed haploid and a, a process called meiosis produces haploid cells okay and that's meiosis and so here's a picture here of sister chromatids so here's two sister chromatids so here's one chromosome that's been duplicated into two and then the centromere is one on each sister chromatid because they got to separate so this was one chromosome and duplicated now it's two sister chromatids so like we were saying two sister chromatids they have to separate and then once they separate once the sisters separate they are considered to be individual chromosomes so it's helpful to kind of take a look at a picture right here you can see one chromosome is duplicated sorry about the wording here is duplicated sister chromatids and then when they separate those are chromosomes so eukaryotic cell division consists of the cell cycle but cell division specifically consists of mitosis which is like nuclear division and cytokinesis which is division of the cytoplasm gametes again are produced by meiosis which we'll talk about next chapter so the cell cycle is an orderly set of stages just prior to the next division you know cells are going to divide the end of the cell cycle the cell grows larger the organelles like replicate dna is replicated the two major stages are interphase which includes several different stages and mitosis and cytokinesis so here's a picture here and i would definitely pause here study this picture there's multiple checkpoints which we'll talk about in class but g1 s g2 mitosis cytokinesis that is the general flow of the cell cycle then there's g0 which is like stalled growth um, so g1 is growth s is growth and dna replication uh, s phase g2 is growth and preparations for a cell division which you can see is mitosis right here and then finally cytokinesis so again most of the time the cells is in interface performance usual functions it's nine to five job doing what it needs to do nerve and muscle cells rarely complete the cell cycle i mean some textbooks say never and then there's been some research that says nerve cells can get out of the g0 stage um, under certain conditions but we're not going to dive into it in this course so here are some um the three phases of interface so g1 the cell doubles its organelle so it grows in size accumulates raw materials S phase DNA is replicated. We go from one chromatid to two sister chromatids, and then G2, the cell synthesizes more proteins and gets ready for mitosis. So again, here's another picture of a duplicated chromosome. You can see the sister chromatids, which will separate uh, kinetochores and centromeres. All right, so moving on, cell cycle again, mitosis, known as nuclear division. This is when we start dividing the chromosomes. Cytokinesis is division of the cytoplasm. Again, our goal, what is our goal? Our goal is to create two genetically identical daughter cells. We are trying to create clones, okay? So here's, again, the cell cycle, G1, S, G2, mitosis, cytokinesis, and then you start, you start with one cell, you end up with two clones. So the phases of the cell cycle, mitosis is conventionally divided into five phases prophase prometaphase which might be new from ninth grade biology metaphase anaphase telophase and then cytokinesis so here are some pictures of um i believe this is like a newt cell but anyways you can see here that you can see the chromosomes are in blue and you can see that they're condensing and they're condensed and then they start to separate metaphase along the middle and then they start to divide and finally telophase so these slides right here are great reviews we will do an activity in class to review this as well but 
These are great reviews as far as what exactly is happening in each stage. I'm not going to read all this for you. That would be a very boring presentation, but you can see here that the G2 uh, of interphase, a nuclear envelope envelops, there, you know, the nucleus contains one or more nucleoli. Um, the centrosomes have formed. Okay, so these guys are really going to be what helps the chromosomes move to the poles of the cells. Prophase, the chromosomes are condensed. There's a sister chromatids right there. Prometaphase, the nuclear envelope is fragmenting. And so the microtubules are extending and can now invade that nuclear area. And hopefully they uh, connect a kinetic core. A specialized protein structure has now formed at the centromere of each chromatid. And so they become connected like that. The metaphase, they line up in the middle. Metaphase plate um, through really complicated mechanisms here, but we're not going to dive into that as well. Anaphase, A for away. So it's a short stage of mitosis, often only lasts in a few minutes. Anaphase, this is when the spindle starts to degrade through multiple mechanisms and the sister chromatids separate and now they're chromosomes and they're moving towards the poles of the cell where the centrosomes are. And then finally, telophase, you start developing cleavage furrow as far as animals go. Nucleoli reappear, the chromosomes become less condensed, they start to um, you know, uncoil. And then finally, cytokinesis is a division of the cytoplasm. So prophase, again, chromatin has condensed, nucleolus disappears, spindle begins to assemble. Microtubules form these star-like arrays termed asters. Again, this is prophase in mitosis. Prometaphase, again, might be new from ninth grade biology, but the centromere of each chromosome develops two kinetochores. This is a specialized protein complex. Basically, it's one attached to each sister chromatin. This is what going, is going to allow the spindles to connect and pull apart those sister chromatids. Metaphase, again, folding across the equatorial plane. Anaphase, they're moving away from each other, the centromere dissolves, and so they're pulled to opposite poles along the kinetic core fibers. Okay, so that can, those kinetic cores are very, very important. Telophase, the spindle disappears, now two clusters of dot chromosomes, a nuclear envelope starts to form, and then finally, cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. It allocates the mother cell's cytoplasm equally to daughter cells, often begins in anaphase. Animal cytokinesis is where a cleavage furrow begins. There's actin filaments that are involved with that. Again, proteins, you know, like pulling on a draw, so eventually it pinches it together. Now, something completely different happens in plants, though, and you might remember this back from ninth grade biology, but or introductory biology. But rigid cells, uh, you know, they don't permit furrowing. Like cell walls, like they're not going to furrow; they're going, they would break if you try to do that. So instead, plants form something called a cell plate. And so you can see here that vesicles contain these like cell membrane parts. And so they line up along that, you know, plane, um, and then they start to fuse together to form a membrane, and eventually a cell wall will form. Okay, and so then this is just kind of summary of what we've been talking about. Some of these slides, the text box is not large enough, but early prophase, and again we have prophase, nucleolus has disappeared. All this is in your textbook. And then prometaphase, the kinetic core is attached to the spindle fiber. So now we're starting to arrange the chromosomes. And metaphase are all along the middle. A for away. The sisters separate. Now they become daughter chromosomes. Telophase, the nuclei, um, nuclei reappear. Um, you know, nuclear membrane starts to develop and starting to form that cleavage furrow. So again, why is this important? It's a really important slide, hence why all the red. This is really important because... It permits growth and repair. Your intestines replace themselves, I forgot exactly, one or two months. Your skin replaces itself. There's so many places you have to make new blood. Your blood has to be recycled. There's so many things that you have to grow and repair. Obviously growing in general is important, but not only that, but growth as far as like maintenance, you know, growing to maintain homeostasis and flowering plants Meristematic tissue retains the ability to divide throughout the life of the plant. Meristems is where it can form into it, like a leaf or a, or a flower. In mammals, mitosis is necessary when a fertilized egg, right? You were just one cell. Remember our very first discussion together and pretend that one leg will turn into the entire building of the school. That was you. Just you're way more complicated than that. You were one cell and you divide into specialized cells through mitosis and cell differentiation. An embryo becomes a fetus and then a cut heals or a broken bone mends. 
These are extremely important functions of mitosis. So let's look a little bit deeper into the mechanisms. This might, again, this, I feel like this will be a little bit deeper than introductory biology stuff, but the mitotic spindle is a structure made of microtubules and associated proteins. So here's like the centrosome from a research article. You don't have to know. But you can see here that they like fluorescently dyed it and you can see that there's the asters and all sorts of stuff. This is the centrosome. This is, so it's like a microtubule organizing center. Um, and so the centrosome duplicates or, you know, replicates B, G1, between the G1S transition and definitely completed before mitosis because it's organizing the mitotic spindle. Okay, spindle microtubules grow out of the centrosome during their migration. An aster also extends from each centrosome. The spindle includes the centrosome, the spindle microtubules, and the asters. And so this, again, is organizing mitosis. And so... It's this microbial, uh, microtubial, excuse me, organizing center in animal cells. So in animals, the centrosome contains two barrel-shaped centrioles. And so kinetochores are these protein compounds. We already talked about them, but let's dive in a little bit deeper. Are that assemble on sections of DNA at centromeres. So during prometaphase, some spindle microtubules attach the kinetochores of chromosomes and begin to move the chromosomes. This is what allows metaphase to happen. Okay, so here's a picture here you can see that here's this imaginary plane along the equator of the cell. And the spindle arranges this. Here's the microtubules, the centro, uh, chromosomes, centrosomes right here. This is one micrometer, crazy small. And so you can see that this is how it works, okay? And so in anaphase, sister chromatids separate and move along the kinetic core microtubules toward opposite ends of the cell. How does this happen? Well, it's depolymerizing, which means it's breaking apart. Chromosomes are also reeled in by motor proteins. Let me show you this. Uh, basically, this uh, I forgot the uh, the scientist's name, gentleman and uh, or female, but basically the kinetic cores right here, spindle poles right here, and he like labeled it, and then he used a laser to destroy it. And so what he saw was that when they, you know, right here he destroyed it. And so what he saw was when the when the cell continued, you know, anaphase, this part didn't shorten which would be indicated that, okay, the movements, something's happening over here to draw the spindles in. But the movement actually, this shortened. And so here is one of the reasons, again, um, another book goes into this, but here's a motor protein, and it's basically walking along, you know, moving along the spindle, um, microtubule that is, and even degrading it into tubular and subunits, building blocks, right? Um, monomers and polymers, remember that discussion? And so that is what is helping this do that. And so my talk spindle, it's, it does get a little bit more complicated. You, this is probably beyond the scope of the AP exam, but just so you can know wh where this movement comes from. And so that is kind of how the spindle works. And the spindle eventually disassembles, of course, go down to the building blocks. So what's crazy in that in prokaryotes, remember prokaryotes meaning no nucleus. We studied prokaryotes and various things like that bacteria and archaea, they reproduce by a type of cell division called binary fission. So in bacteria, the single chromosome replicates beginning at the origin of replication. The two dark chromosomes actively move apart while the cell elongates. The plasma membrane pinches inward, dividing the cell into two. So it's obviously better to see this as a picture. So here you can see the chromosome, origin replication, two copies, you know, of origin. And so it kind of splits and starts, you know, dividing and replicating. Um, excuse me, replicating, and soon after one copy of the origin moves rapidly toward the other end, evolving like an actin-like protein. Replication continues, and then eventually the cell is elongating and divides into, this is how a scratchy throat turns into like, man, it feels like I'm swallowing glass right now because my throat hurts so bad. Bacteria literally divide pretty quick. And so, of course, from a naturalistic perspective, you know, for an evolutionist, all of this seems um, to be evidence of a common origin, but for a, per, for a scientist who believes in uh, God who created the universe, it's, the, it's a common designer. Prokary so prokaryotes evolved before eukaryotes in naturalistic evolution. So mitosis, according to natural evolution, probably evolved from binary fission. It's more complex. It's in eukaryotes, not prokaryotes, but it resembles binary fission. And so, but 
Even more interesting than that, according to some scientists, certain pros like Donald Flagellus, Diet Tom, some use exhibits television that's like an intermediate between binary fission and mitosis. Sometimes, and we'll talk about intermediary forms, but like let's say you have like this ancient form A, and now you have like its modern relative C. Well, according to Darwinian evolution, there had to probably be some sort of B there, like some sort of intermediary form. Like if birds came from dinosaurs, you would expect to find back in the past maybe a bird that had like leathery, you know, scales or something like that. You know, intermediary form, Archaeopteryx, which we'll talk about. And so it's it's interesting to kind of think about. But so the these intermediary forms, they can be found like dinoflagellates. So the chromosomes attach to the nuclear envelope, which remains intact. And the microtubules go through the nuclear envelope. And diatoms and even some yeast, the nuclear envelope remains intact. Um, the microtubules form a spindle within the nucleus. So again, this is examples of possibly intermediary forms. But does this mean evolution is true? No. This is just data through a certain worldview. And one person would look at this a certain way, and another person would look at it a different way. And so I'm really looking forward to that evolution and creation discussion. That will be really fun. But yeah, so hopefully this was helpful. Um, cell cycle, mitosis, spindle activity. I hopefully this uh, stimulated your memory from introductory biology. Hopefully this uh, brought back some wonderful memories of those days. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. So um, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Be well and God bless.